Jesse Nelson kind of seems like a prime example of everything not to do for your debut. For those of you who may not know Jessie or be familiar with her eyes, she was a part of the prominent UK-based girl group, Little Mix. Little Mix's music is a bit more teen pop focused, at times to their own detriment, but they are still all very talented women, they can all sing and perform, at least as a group. Initially, Jessie Nelson was a bit of an odd one out. She was made fun of for her looks and weight, which took a toll on her mental health. As she grew older, she found the pressures of being in a girl group hard to navigate, so she left. I just want to be honest, like the team that I had prior to what I've got now, like didn't care, genuinely didn't. And that was something that really led me to feeling depressed and wanting to not do it anymore because I genuinely felt like no one gave a shit. And when I voiced that I was struggling, no one cared. And that was like a real thing for me of like, okay, wow, like I'm just generally here to just do my job. Like, and yeah, now like, obviously I've got a new team and I'm around like people that genuinely love and care about me and it makes such a difference. So I think when you are struggling, when you feel that way, it's so important to be around people that genuinely love you and care about you and just want the best for you. Being that Jessie was the first one out, and had the underdog narrative as well, she really could have worked her solo moment into something substantial. Instead, it was the perfect recipe for disaster and the type of negativity no one wants their moment to be overshadowed with. It's important to mention that Jessie comes from a girl group that leans on the girl power shtick very hard. Little Mix took a lot of cues from groups like TLC, Destiny's Child, and the Spice Girls. And Little Mix has arguably done better than all of them specifically when it comes to operating on an equilibrium and letting all the girls have their moment to shine. So much so that they didn't even have a lead singer either. Even when initially faced with pressures from their label to make a member the lead star, they refused. And honestly, I think that's been the key to Little Mix's longevity. Very rarely does the original lineup in a group last for nearly a decade. It's even more miraculous considering that they were teenagers when this group kicked off. And teenagers naturally clash and go through different phases, but somehow they remained intact, with all the members having a pretty clean slate. In 2020, Jessie would announce her departure, and in 2021, she would announce her first outing as a solo artist, a feature with Nicki Minaj titled Boys, sampling Diddy's classic Bad Boys for Life. For me, this is the music that I've always wanted to make, she says. I don't think that anyone is gonna expect this. I actually don't think the song is all that different from Little Mix when they lean into their hip-hop and R&B influences. So I wouldn't say the record itself was unexpected, but the disaster that shadowed it certainly was. Is it a strong song? No, but it's not the worst thing I've heard. I wouldn't say that this song screams, I should definitely start my solo career with this. The sentiment of the song is kind of cringe. It's basically screaming, look at me, I'm so bad, I'm so cool, I like bad guys. And sure it's not the first song to dwell into topics like this, but the song is just so on the nose with what it's trying to portray. And of course she has the rapper featured on the song to help legitimize the image she's striving for. Also her voice on the song sounds very unintelligible at times. You can barely understand what she says until she gets to the chorus. But what was the most off-putting thing was the live she did with Nicki Minaj where Nicki took the front stage and shaded Jesse Nelson's past group members. Well, shaded is even a light term for this situation. She directly called them out and insinuated that Leanne was jealous of Jesse getting her solo moment. Nicki told her she was a clown and jealous. This to me is still one of the oddest dramas to come from the Nicki canon. Once again, Jesse and Leanne's tension had absolutely nothing to do with Nicki and Jessie sat there laughing while Nikki was vicious about her former group member. And not to minimize Jessie's own struggles, but she is the one that has complained about being picked on, but then she sort of perpetuates the same thing. And I also don't think she really took her group into account. Mind you, Little Mix was branded as a girl power group and a sisterhood of sorts. So maybe getting into a conflict almost immediately with a former band member wasn't a wise decision. Apparently this tension started over screenshots, but many people have come out and claimed that they are fake. The boys' music video in particular was also met with accusations of cultural appropriation. 
as well as claims of Jesse Nielsen purposely attempting to appear more racially ambiguous. I do think there is a trend that has existed for eons in the pop world, where white artists turn to black music and aesthetics to legitimize their careers or break away from a nice image. Now, there's nothing wrong with making hip-hop or R&B music, but there are certain things you should be mindful of. And she really put out the stops with this, Diddy even appears in the video, so she got the stamp of approval from the creator of the song she sampled, and someone who was a hip-hop icon. Still, the video could certainly be perceived as tacky, and not very thoughtful of optics. She was obviously going for a 90s throwback type of video, but the execution wasn't the best. The song wasn't even strong enough or successful enough to warrant its controversy. Boys was not a commercial success, so all the drama for good or worse was not at all worth it. Jessie's album has since allegedly been put on hold by her label. According to The Sun, the bosses had asked her to go back to the drawing board after hearing demos of the new tracks, which led to some speculation that her debut album was shelved. Jessie actually responded to the claims, I promise you there's absolutely nothing to worry about. I've had an amazing time in the studio in LA, working on my album which is almost finished. I'm so excited for all of you to hear the next single, which is coming soon, so stay tuned. I love you all and thank you all for being patient. So we shall see if Jesse Nielsen is able to actually turn this disastrous start around. Mind you, there have been many group members who don't get it right on their first try when going solo. It's more common than talked about, but in Jesse's case, it's also more than just a weak single that she would have to work out. I don't think it was smart either to kind of join in on slagging your former bandmate, especially when it happens so sudden. Like it wouldn't be surprising if Little Mix had problems with each other, that's normal within most groups, but doing it so suddenly over something that was supposedly false is not a good look, especially when you're trying to build your own career, and at that point in time, your fan base is your group's fan base. Jesse Nelson's debut is kind of like an everything not to do when you're trying to go solo guide. The other girls also took the high road. They didn't really engage or try to fire back at Jesse, but they did make a small statement in an interview. We don't really want to dwell, because we have so much to celebrate as a three. We've dealt with it in the best way that we know how, and got each other through it. We don't want to talk about the video, or be critical. But one thing we will clarify regarding the black fishing situation, is that Jesse was approached by the group in a very friendly, educational manner. Noting that the conversation took place before Nelson left the band, so it seems like all this could have been avoidable. It's such a terrible PR mess to recover from when you're just starting your career.